The crew was awakened at about 5.13 p.m. Central Time yesterday evening, or 4.13 in the morning local in Baikonur, which is just about nine hours prior to the launch. And then they participated in all of their final pre-launch activities. <clears throat> One of the first things they did was the long-standing tradition where they signed the doors in the Cosmonaut Hotel. Um, in Baikonur, Kazakhstan for Fisher. This was his first chance to sign one of the doors. This is the hotels where all of the crews stay um, in the weeks, uh, about two weeks leading up to the launch. You and all of your Following that, they receive a blessing from a Russian Orthodox priest, another long-standing tradition for Soyuz crews. The priest also blesses the rocket itself, uh, typically about a day or two before the launch, and then they're ready to do their final walkout. <clears throat> At about 8.13 p.m. Central Time yesterday evening, 7.13 in the morning in Baikonur, the crew departed the Cosmonaut Hotel. You can see the backup crew just behind them uh, with uh, NASA astronaut Randy Bresnik. Um, and as they departed, they then boarded the bus for the ride from the hotel to the integration and suit-up facility at Building 254, in the, on, uh, actually on the grounds of the Baikonur Cosmodrome. And at this point in time, a lot of the friends and family are gathered to start saying farewell, but this isn't the last time that they'll see these crew members before they load up into the Soyuz vehicle. Now you can see Jack Fisher, the NASA astronauts' family members, his wife and two daughters there in Baikonur to support him just before this launch. And the crew arrived at building 254. Again, this is the integration and suit up facility to get into their Soka launch and entry suits. Here you can see Jack Fisher um, being assisted by uh, some of the suit technicians from Roscosmos and Energia. They arrived at 254 at about 8.58 p.m. Central Time last night, 7.58 in the morning in Baikonur. Each crew member goes undergoes uh, final medical exams and then gets suited up in these Soka launch and entry suits. These are the suits that all of the crew members wear for any of the dynamic activities in the Soyuz vehicle. So obviously during today's launch, um, they'll be wearing the suits for the duration. They'll um, typically get out of them um, if they're doing a two-day rendezvous. But since this is a, a planned six hour, just four orbits of the Earth, they'll typically stay in their suits the whole time. So a lot of time spent in these suits for these crew members in those chairs. Uh, but they'll also be wearing these when they come home in September for all the landing operations. And these are able to be pressurized, provide life support to the crew members um, during all the dynamic phases of the Soyuz flight. And then following that suit up, each of the uh, suits actually gets pressurized just to do a final checkout on the integrity of all the various seals. And again, these suits get pressurized, so just in case there were some kind of compromise to the cabin atmosphere in the Soyuz. Uh, the suits would be able to keep the uh, astronauts healthy and intact, but they go one by one into these chairs and a ser uh, set of engineers um, plug in various hoses to get these suits pressurized. You'll actually see them balloon up a little bit um, to show that they have a good pressure integrity, no leaks in the suits. And this one of the final checkouts before they're ready to go and board into the Soyuz spacecraft. <laughs> and this is also a chance again for the friends and family of the crew members to 
um, watch them go through these final suit-up activities, and then they get a chance to speak to them through the glass. Um, you'll notice through a lot of these videos, the crew members um, kept away from the general population there uh, in Baikonur and all of the folks helping them out wearing medical masks and things of that nature as the crews are kept in a uh, pretty much constant state of quarantine during their last two weeks before a flight just to avoid any last minute exposure to germs or sickness before they head into space. And we already saw Fyodor Yurchikin doing his final suit checks. This is uh, a view of Jack Fisher again. This done uh, several hours before launch, so quite a bit of time there. Randy Bresnick getting some shots. He's on the backup crew for Jack Fisher for this flight. Again, after those pressure checks, they're able to go up to the glass and via microphone talk to friends and family. Can you sleep on the way up? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He has your hand. <laughs> Kids, smile. Oh, it's good. 
Again, following that chance to talk once more with friends and family who are in attendance for the launch, they get a chance to uh, talk to a number of the managers from NASA and Roscosmos. Everything will work out well. We would like to wish you successful work on board of the station. We're looking forward to seeing you back. We're always there to support you. We're always ready to help. The ground teams are ready to support you. Um, have a great time, have a great launch, and take excellent care of Space Station for us. <laughs> Dear colleagues, we can say that you are winning with uh, quality, not quantity. As is the tradition, I would like to uh, wish you successful launch, successful work on board, and we're going to be looking forward to seeing you on, bo on the ground. So we're confident in your training in the um, capabilities of your team, we know you will do it. Wishing you a successful flight and successful docking. So all the very best. Thank you very much. So hope the landing is going to be during the day. And once all those suit-up activities are complete, the pressure in the suits verified to be airtight crew gets ready to depart for the launch pad. Your Sir Chairman of the Government Commission Expedition is ready to launch. Crew Commander, Flight Engineer, ready. Have a good flight. So with that, they report to the head of the Russian State Commission, ready for launch, and then it's on their way to the pad. Jack Fisher and Fyodor Yurchikin. Uh, the crew members boarded their bus at about 11.13 p.m. Central Time last night, 10.13 in the morning in Baikonur for the, the ride over to launch pad number one. The drive takes about 25 minutes. And they were there by 10.38 in the morning over in Baikonur. And they again greet members of management for, from Roscosmos and NASA one more time before making their way up the stairs to the elevator that'll take them to the top of the rocket and into their spacecraft. Good luck. Thank you. Everything will be fine. And again, the crew members waved goodbye one more time before boarding the capsule and then making, uh, getting into the elevator, riding up to the top and getting into the Soyuz. Uh, they've been on board now for about an hour and a half. The Soyuz rocket, you can see billowing oxygen was fueled about three hours prior to launch. <laughs> 